Let's hear it. Four more years. All right, all right. Awesome. That's going to be great. Thank you guys so much. So, of course, the introduction. Thank you so much to my friend Patty. Thank you so much for Lexi for having me here. Um, I go by the conservative Latino online. Uh, my name, real name is Anthony Cabasa. I am a son of a Mexican immigrant mother, proud to be American, proud to be of a Hispanic heritage. Um, I think we bring a lot to the table. What do you guys think? Right? We bring some flavors in here. We bring the guacamole to the party, right? There we go. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, so what I do is I'm an activist. I, I try to work and I try to network a lot with, believe it or not, Telemundo and Univision. Uh, they were actually here earlier, to my surprise, and I think to many of us, right? They actually showed up, and I'm very thankful for that. Um, a lot of people said, oh, let them have it, you know, the fake news and all this stuff. And I was like, no, no, let's, let's, treat, them, let's treat them nice. Let's show them that when the Democrats go low, we go high, right? Yeah, I remember that phrase, right? Who was that? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. So... Here's a little quote I want to start you guys off with, and I think it's, it's really good. They say, they say, if you're not a liberal in your 20s, it means that you have no heart. But if by your 30s you're not conservative, it means you don't have a brain. <laughs> right? So I just, I'm 32, I just turned 32, so I got my brain two years ago. Uh, but let me tell you, I'll be honest, I'm new to the Republican Party. I, I was never a Democrat, so I can never really say that I switched from Democrat to Republican. But I'm a brand new conservative. I think I've always been conservative. My mom raised me Christian. I think a lot of us, right? Hispanics, Christian Catholic, right? Not, not, not the Nancy Pelosi Catholic, but you know, <laughs> the, the, the real Catholics, guys, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of amazing what uh, Democrat Catholics are trying to pass under our noses. You know, what they're trying to take away from the evangelical vote. They're trying to kind of morph us into this new progressive and woke Christianity and in Catholicism, I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's not the same God I worship. He's not for any of these things. So I don't really know what you're talking about here. But I wanted to get into, uh, uh, Gavin Newsom just tweeted recently, right? He says, no other state has taken in more refugees in California. It is a point of pride and principle. America is the land of hope, a nation founded by immigrants where anything is possible. Those seeking refuge, fleeing violence and war should be welcomed here. Now that sounds great, right? Yeah, man, let's take in all these refugees and let's help the world and this is that, but what does the state of California look like? Does it look like we're in, we're in any shape to be helping anybody? Like truly. So I, I kind of started looking up some statistics and I just went to good old Google and I said, California, the worst in, and then it just started auto-filling things for me, right? Here are some of the things that we're the worst in. Homelessness. Right? They're everywhere now. And it seems like it's just increasing and increasing and increasing. These are veterans. These are our American brothers and sisters, children, living on the streets while Democrats continue to virtue signal to foreign nationals and telling them, come on over, we'll accept you, we'll give you free everything. But what about Americans? What about us? What about the immigrants that came here the right way and we're still struggling? What about us that live paycheck to paycheck? Right? We're still trying to realize our American dream. Now we got to hand it off to new people. Like, man, that kind of seems crazy, right? It's like you can't give from an empty cup. So why are we making these promises? Homelessness. California lowest performing schools, 110 district schools that require intervention in Los Angeles alone. 110 schools that are in dire need of either funding or some kind of reform. California home to the worst public schools in the nation. Surprise, surprise. I'd like to say that public education now are liberal indoctrination camps. That's what I call them. Wage inequality surging in California. Largest wealth gap between the, largest, the wealthiest 1% and the poorest of the poor. California voted worst quality of life. Oh yeah, absolutely. People are just leaving the state in the droves. The middle class is leaving us. Why? Taxes. 
Regulations on companies. I actually have a brother-in-law who just moved this company out of California where he employed over 100 people, took all those jobs to Florida because they don't have the same taxes that they have for companies here. The over-regulation. California cities, top worst air pollution. What? The climate activists? The Gavin Newsoms? The, the we care about the environment people? There's no way. Not California, but... Sad reality is, I looked up the top 10 cities, I think like six of them were in California for worst air pollution. Um, let's see here. So what we do here, uh, uh, what I do with the, as chairman to the Republican National Hispanic Assembly of California, that's right, we exist. There are Republicans and we actually have an assembly and we got little fancy rings that when we join them together, we make a super, Super, uh, one of the Power Rangers, right? When they all get together, we form a robot. No, but all kidding aside, what we've been doing is we've been registering voters. I think that for Hispanics, we pride ourselves in our activism. We came here to work and work hard. We're not here for handouts. We're not here for welfare. We're not here to cause a burden on anybody else, anybody else's way of living. All right? We're not envious people. People always tell me, like, oh, man, but aren't you mad that the wealthy don't pay their, their, their share of tax? I'm like, well... Let's look at Jeff Bezos. I know he's not the most liked guy, but this guy's donated billions, billions to charities. Not including what he does with his jobs, right? He employs probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people all over the US and maybe even worldwide. That's why a lot of us like Trump, right? He didn't promise jobs by expanding government. He just went out and created it when he was a young kid. And into his 20s and 30s, he created jobs. There's a lot of people that really rely on him and his expertise. Like people want to make fun of his, the way he talks and all that stuff. Like, hey, guess what? This guy was able to create thousands and thousands of jobs. And he's not just hiring white people. He hires all Americans. And that's what I appreciate about him. And on the private sector, he showed that he was able to be successful and he was able to hire everybody and provide for them. So what we do with the RNHA, we do Gavin Newsom recalls. We work with GOP candidates. We endorse candidates as well. Our organization has the power to endorse candidates. Um, so we're sitting closely with GOP candidates. We're not just going to be selling out. This is one thing I make very clear to them. We sit down, we have a, a good talk, and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm conservative, I'm Christian, so therefore, you know, just throw, throw your endorsement my way. And I'm like, well, hold on there, man. Like, well, what's happening about the things that we care about as Americans? What about the homeless? What about Medicare? What about getting big pharma out of doctors' pockets so that they're not passing all of these regulations and over killing us, right? So what's gonna really happen? So I sit down and all these things, and I'll be honest, I've walked out on GOP candidates. I'm like, I'm sorry, you're not gonna have our support. We are GOP and we do endorse Republicans, <laughs> but we're not here to do what a lot of the Democratic Latinos do, which is they have undying loyalty to the Democrats. And they'll never sell out. They'll never be like, they'll never switch. I mean, they are sellouts. They call us to sell us, right? Los vendidos, that's what they call us. But they're so loyal to that party that they're willing to sell everybody out, even if it means that we're just digging a hole bigger and bigger and bigger. So well, again, what we're doing is we're registering people, we're re-registering them from Democrat to Republican. We got a great organization working with us, Latinos for Medical Freedom. They were ex-Democrats, they're thousands strong, and they're all Republicans now. So I welcome you to the party. Thank you so much for being here. And this is what we're going to continue to do. So if you want to find us, you can go to www.rnhacalifornia.org. Or you can talk to me after the event. I got cards. I got a pen. I got pictures to hand out. Whatever you want. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be helping flip California red. This is what my organization is going to be focused on. So we're working with Hidalgo, who's here tonight. And we're going to be working all across our state to help Republicans win. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for being here. And God bless you guys.